Right, hello guys, today is the 7th of October 2022, I'm trying to make a video about Ukraine. I tried doing a couple of times and something always goes wrong, so uh, like I do something and then it just dies and then I wouldn't have time or opportunity to do the video again. So today I'm gonna make another update about the situation in Ukraine, as uh, so obviously the subject of the Russian mobilization or as they call it in Ukraine uh, Magilizatsia which is uh, not coming from the uh, mobilization but comes from the gravitization which is grave from putting Russian guys into the graves uh, which to be honest became a laughing stock for many Ukrainians already so I'm trying to make this video obviously from the point of view of the thing, things I hear from Ukraine because this is the kind of area which is to be honest not being covered by the western channels like a lot of times a lot of things I hear is like people reading from the Russian textbooks like you know uh, a great example where uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson uh, the guy who runs Tesla, Elon Musk, you know, they, they start really repeating the Russian propaganda kind of saying, oh my god, we have to make a deal with Russians and like, you know, just suck their dicks as much as, as they want, as much as they will allow us. But we're gonna cover this today as well. But we're gonna start from obviously the military situation in Ukraine because a lot of things were happening, like, you know, a few more areas added up. And we're going to start again from the south, because the south is the place where the Russians, like, uh, yep, you can see this, this area, like, this is where the, the, some of the best Russian troops are still being kept. As a matter of fact, see this bright blue line, so this is where the, Ru the Ukrainians have started from, and in the last few days they have significantly put Russians, pu pushed Russians back. And again, this was what's happening, like some things that Ukrainian commentators were saying is, is like, look, there is no railway, so obviously they, they have troubles moving the troops between the different areas of attacks. So they have a main defense here, so when Ukrainians come from another side, they don't have the time to do it, because Ukrainians can obviously attack from Mykolaiv, and they can, from here, and they can attack from Krivirich here, and they can move their troops by rail to as much as they can and then just kind of come in. Russians can't do this. Russians were also running low on supplies. Uh, something we've covered, I've covered in the previous videos where these bridges were actually like damaged or completely broken. So the Russians have very limited amount of supplies they can put into their troops and the troops cannot really withdraw as well because of the limited capacity of moving backwards and forwards so like what I was saying before to be honest the best option the troops have on this side they are ready to actually just give up just say look you know why a white flag and there's been some videos around of Russian troops just driving up on that like it wasn't the tank it was uh, by La Machina Desanta BMD it's like a um, uh, kind of troops carrier but from paratroop paratroopers kind of thing and they came on one of those literally just waving white flags just you know the whole the whole regiment just kind of pounding there and they've been like you know said look you know we give up we don't want to fight but obviously here they can't fight really like much but it's kind of a double edge saw this area because yes they don't have the supplies and yes the Ukrainians managed by making strikes against Crimean airfields they managed to put Russian aviation make make Russian aviation go way towards Russia and they're now based across the Azov Sea so this means that they cannot ride or fly the sorties as much so this means that Ukrainian aviation has a bit more of a free reigning there and 
this is the area where most of the western weaponry is used so they managed to take out most of the air defenses as well and this allows the ukrainians to come in but this is like kind of this area is a double-edged sword because i'm gonna look at google maps so number one i actually had it set up at this area so what you see here is like this is a road but this is an irrigation channel so many of those channels they use because this is actually a very dry area of ukraine so like in the summer it gets like plus 50 centigrade celsius or centigrade, i think celsius and centigrade is about the same in english but it gets really really hot it gets really really dry there's not as many rain, rain in this area and actually also in the winter like I mean we were laughing at some point of time when we were traveling from Kherson to Kiev and we were like crossing there was like a sign which is like welcome to Kherson and before the sign as we're coming in from Kiev before the sign there is snow but where there is a line where there's like a sign and you come into Kherson there's like a straight line where the, the ground is actually black there's no snow there whatsoever so it's a very dry area but these irrigation channels are used in the summer to supply water all over all over the region so like you can see this they go right along the roads and from what i've hear from ukrainian commentators the russians use them as kind of ways to use them as defense lines so instead of trying digging trenches if they're falling back they can literally just kind of hide in the channel and shoot back but another side of this area obviously if we're gonna open it up if you see this is essentially straight land so it's there's not many like ditches and stuff like this so if you're sitting in something like this and somebody is coming towards you you can see them from from far away it kind of a double-edged sword as i say because it also allows that if you have something in the air which can pick where the people are sitting where they made this their little kind of defense line you can make artillery shoot at them more but obviously if they're already entrenched you know it's harder to knock them out but if you're attacking it means that the people can actually shoot back at you with a reasonable level of precision right you know so it's kind of like so ukrainians kind of slowly moving forward across because these are like plain lines like you can see for miles there so ukrainians kind of broke through the russian lines and pushed the russians back by simply we talked about it in my previous video i talked about it where ukrainians used the tactic of simply destroying the russian armor and russian kind of storage facilities and this is how the russians now simply don't have the forces to hold back the ukrainians advances from here while the main concentration was here right so i think the target here would be to hit kahovka kind of here because breslavska Novakahovka, so that they can stop the influx of support coming from through this bridge over here because this is like a big dam and obviously ukrainians could not really kind of blow things up in there on that bridge because they could damage the dam and then it could bring like irreparable damages to the whole area around it cause lots of deaths because obviously a lot of Kherson city like a lot of city here like they actually there's lots of houses and buildings which are actually almost on the level of the water so if the dam is broken it can do a lot of damage so it's like Ukrainians and not Russians but obviously once ukrainians are more successful this is probably one of the things to look out for because we could probably with a fair degree of certainty can say that the russians will probably try to blow this one up so we'll see how it goes hopefully they're gonna fail like they failed when they tried to blow up a dam in one of the rivers in the south already it was on the river somewhere up here they they tried kind of somewhere up here they, they was a ukrainians advance and russians have tried to blow up a dam there but they failed miserably this one they have a bit more access to so we'll see what happens 
Uh, but this is the one to look out for, so Ukrainians want to really kind of come through and get this, so to, to cut off the supplies of the weapons and just limit the Russians to a very small play area where they can cross in and essentially encircle them because by this time it's getting cold so crossing the river back is going to be a bit hard for the Russians right people talking obviously about the fact that it's going to be like a rainy season a winter season it's like it's questionable because this area is actually quite dry so I lived in there for like start of my life I traveled back there while I already lived in Europe we went out hunting with my uncles so yes you have like some times when it's kind of muddy but a lot of time it's actually quite dry you could go like hunting for ages and most of the winter as well and we would go we go walk across the fields and to be honest we just chatted and well my uncles would have a few drinks with my father but didn't really <laughs> didn't really kill much <laughs> it's like it's, literally you go hunting just to go for a walk and then have a few drinks on the way but right, but this one again this area is they, the Ukrainians managed to capture some of the best troops in from the Russian army in this area there's over the, the at the start of the operation there was more than 20,000 there we suspect there's a lot less now, obviously. Right, it's not much happening here. Obviously, a lot happened down this area. Last time I've made a video, Ukrainians were kind of standing along this line, along this kind of river thing, and then were coming all the way to here, right? So it's kind of like this. So Ukrainians, and you remember I said, somebody watched my video, I've said that the next advance, probably going to be the next big advance, is going to come from like either here or here. As long as the Ukrainians make their back, come, make their troops come through, make sure their supplies are nearby, and they will be trying to kind of cut across all the way to this road, which is exactly ha happened. There was, they've managed to encircle this little town, Le Mans. So they came across, you see this main line here. So they came across here and then came up here and they came across here. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, Ukrainians managed to encircle about 2,000 troops in there. Or up to 2,000 troops, which is obviously, they were not just in Leman, they were like all over the area, but like hundreds, few from a few hundred, so like some managed to escape some didn't so it's kind of the not very forthcoming at least from what i hear from ukrainian military they say look you know this is still an ongoing operation we don't want to say stuff because you know we say something and then it turns out to be a complete pile of bollocks like what, what happens with the russians so ukrainian military command seems to be a bit more held back on the information obviously uh, Western journalists complaining that for some reason by the Ukrainian command is not giving the Western journalists the information like oh look what is Ukrainians gonna do in the in the east or wherever like can we please have all the plans of your operations because apparently Western journalists want to be able to write about this in their newspapers I mean if if, you, if they're war journalists if they have a bit, bit of brain you know look you can guess. If you can't guess, then you probably shouldn't be writing this shit like this. Right, and uh, what we see is that, look, you know, obviously they continued on after they took out Le Mans, they continued cutting across, and we see that Ukrainians are moving to this road, because this was like a big supply route, because Svatova, the what we talked about as well before, is the Russians, they operate in kind of, they don't have like a full defense line, they have like strongholds and Svatova is like supply stronghold so they have like they, they store their ammunitions there they have some repair shops probably there you know but lots of ammunition and take it like everything stored near Svatova again this is what I hear from Ukrainian commentators this is not something I actually know but what Ukrainian commentator says this is one of the kind of core strongholds they have because they can supply they could supply it from Russia by rail somewhere here 
and also there is like a big obviously motorways coming in here so the Ukrainian motorways are not exactly German motorways but nevertheless these are main roads which can take the weight which can take the machinery that goes in there so what we see is they like look they already cut across here they bro broke across the defense lines slowly they s the Russians command said they built a defense line on the border like see if you see this kind of line here this is the border between the Kharkiv region and Luhansk region and they basically saying that they build the defense line somewhere here so Ukrainians kind of probably can have struggled with passing this line we're not sure yet we'll see because obviously this stuff has just happened in the next couple of days and again the Ukrainians have captured lots of territory and we're suspecting that they'll be like moving in their supply lines closer to the to the attack line before making another jump I have not been to this area of Ukraine so I don't know how things are there but from my what I'm here there's like lots of ravines there it's not as flat as in the south so it kind of pluses and minuses to that as well because Ukrainians sometimes can sneak through behind the enemy lines without Russians even knowing and that has been something talked about again by Ukrainian commentators where Ukrainians would use like Humvees and stuff like this they put a, cup, a machine gun and they have a few anti-tank missiles with them and literally just drive in shoot the, the missiles like and shoot up some of the soldiers and then just run away and there's nothing Russians can actually do against it but what we'll probably suspect we can see is Ukrainians breaking through instead of like fighting for the big cities so like Kremina for example here it's not a big city but again it's kind of one of the strongholds you see that Ukrainians are not really kind of trying to take the cities. The idea, idea is, is like, you know, they just go past through them through places which are not very well guarded. This is the area where Russians already put in people that they already mobilized. Right? This is their, their reports where Ukrainians say, yeah, we've already seen some people that have been mobilized fighting in this area. Like, so they had no training, but essentially just thrown in there given the machine gun and said look you there's probably the guys who had been who had served recently or had some military career and they've been essentially thrown in there there's a whole mess with the mobilization we're, we're gonna talk about that in a second but yeah so, but with what, what we can see suspect is that Ukraine is probably gonna break through the defense lines because from what happened here we can see that these troops are not very well prepared here because the best troops are down south and this means Ukrainians are probably gonna break through and they're gonna try and encircle this city instead of trying to fight for it they, they, instead of going to city battles they're probably just gonna go around and try to encircle it and they obviously try to push Russians here towards the Ukrainian border there's been a video when a Russian TV channels have shown that they basically set up their artillery units on the Russian territory so they had the artillery, their rocket artillery and basically they started shooting towards Ukraine <laughs> Ukrainians shot back and the Russians were like how dare Ukrainians shoot and like shoot against our artillery units that are shooting in Ukra into Ukraine from Russian territory how dare they, you know, it's like and the thing is is like i can see stuff like this <laughs> being repeated in the western media so it's like complete bullshit as long as i'm concerned but let's get to the mobilization obviously uh in the originally when it came out the mobilization was like oh my god the russians are gonna everybody on the west were like now the russians are gonna come in and they're gonna capture Ukraine they're gonna have like a million people in there they're gonna send this million people <laughs> and it's like they're gonna kill everyone it's like and uh, since the mobilization started they have got like 90,000 people I think from the again from information people get from Ukrainian sources all right we're here we're here 
uh, they don't have the supplies to give to their soldiers essentially uh, let's just look I've got this one no, no. okay no the okay yeah so this is the story on LBC already in UK where the one of the Russians uh, like mobilized people essentially they they one of the people who were doing the mobilization he was basically started screaming and threatening the guy the guy just shot the bastard right uh, yep this is a story uh, mobilized mobilized people in Iraq in Russian Federation kind of start not a fight but obviously they they have like a little uprising uh, they have they, they they have a video here where they say look you know they gave us like a weapons which are like one they were giving them live weapons with live munition but the weapons are so bad but they were saying that, that look you know they're giving us these weapons but we don't have a permit we're not really assigned to any military kind of company we're just sitting here in the train we have to buy our own food we've just been left in the middle of a field not far from a town you know we like literally could give machine guns and <laughs> bullets <laughs> nothing else so, you know what should we do should we guys start going and like you know using those machine guns to get the food or something like but yeah so it's like it's been a disaster from the start and go but i mean funkus 530 uh, one of the channels I talked about they have a few years where these guys like completely pissed like when they came for the mobilization like this is the, the weapons they were given to in yeah Russian drifties issued rust AK rifles but this one was said like look this is giving, been given to the tank crew so like okay you know uh, this is where some of the uh, commanders from the the running the mobilization being absolutely like rude to people there's videos of russians what's this yeah there's a fight somewhere like near because people will literally just came they, they came into the mobilization place where they should supposed to go through the medical and they were essentially rounded up put on the bus and sent off so they didn't even have time to pick up their documents nothing we just like yep yeah, okay there's a story about a blind guy being like drafted so that he was born blind he's like like all blind people he doesn't have a hundred percent blindness but he can about see about like 20 percent or something like this essentially nothing he just kind of see shades legally blind <laughs> from birth and they drafted him the stories about drafting like 60 old 65 year old guys and stuff like this so yeah this is not and the thing is is like they're gonna be sending those guys but to ukraine obviously many of them will most likely die because they the russians don't not only they don't do they not have the kind of weapons to give them but they don't have the they're not properly trained they don't have even like first aid kids there was <laughs> you're going about somewhere where the doctor was saying look you know get the tampons like the tampon which women use during their period and if you get wounded just shove the tampon in the in the wound and pray for the best uh, <laughs> you know and then just tie it up and hopefully it will stop the blood and there was actually some western military guys commenting on this and they were saying like no that shit doesn't work you need to have proper like things to do that because these tampons they don't stop the blood <laughs> that they don't create pressure enough pressure in the wound to actually stop the bleeding so yeah uh, this is a actually video by Dmitry Patapenka and another guy so they're like talking about mobilization these are Russian guys talking <laughs> and this one was brilliant they're like look guys you know what you're gonna get mobilized so like make sure you have your will sorted like you're gonna die that's it <laughs> you know just make sure all your all your affairs are in order so was this one was 
yeah, relying on time on a Russian tradition of asking. Yeah, this again, this for like people. So obviously, you know, this stuff like this, and if we had comments by obviously Russians threatening the nuclear war, which is like made Ukrainians kind of well, really just laugh at them. Uh, talk personally myself, I was talking to someone who's actually in Odessa now, a friend of mine, and uh, it's a girl, I've known her for many, many years, or a girl, woman, young, youngish, young woman, 30 is not really old, she's like, but she's living there with her husband, and her father managed to get away from her son, but some other members of her family are still under Russian occupation, and she was like, look, we're sitting here and there is a missile flying and they just knocked it off this out of the sky and we're like not even kind of bothered about this until we have like the sirens going that something flying our way you know we don't really care like they, they knock down the, the missile and it's just an everyday occasion and what we're seeing is that the russians they're having trouble with not just like machine guns and like food for the soldiers which is being brought in there by their families but they also have problems with supplying them with walking tanks with walking artillery and this is something which was saying will happen right i was saying this at the beginning of the war like you know the russians will sooner or later gonna run out of all the supplies and the same the missiles they're shooting into ukraine now as well like they shoot them at the target but the missiles have a hit range of about like a five to six hundred meter radius essentially you have something which can shoot like <laughs> I don't know three four five football stadiums was about well, five football stadiums away from their target right if it's a target right they're not they ain't no aiming like at the military installations as well they actually try to hit somewhere where they will hate the civilian population it's a terror campaign which they've been running and there's their threats of nuclear weapons to be honest ukrainians go like yeah you know you've been bombing us so like you know all the time already we already have hundreds you know hundreds of people dead in many cities total thousands of civilians killed by by rocket strikes so thousands of civilians killed by Russian soldiers like you know in the occupied territories like the videos of let's look it up yeah uh, Russian torture yeah they see that like 450 graves found torture chambers there's a actually play this photo somewhere where they found where they basically were take they, they were torturing people but they were taking out so some there's a used to be a fashion in the older generation where they would use gold for their teeth coverings and things like this because gold was one of those materials which is like would not deteriorate you know like and at that time there was no like modern things no modern fillings for the teeth and stuff like this so they would use gold and where the russians would take out that gold from from the people's teeth and they if they have a golden tooth replacement they would take those and just pull them off people they had like whole bags of them so right the Russia campaign so again going back to something we mentioned obviously the beginning of the videos like Jordan Peterson and Elon Musk talking about how we should let Russians have their way well this is Russians having their way Aleppo Russia was a Russians having their way we all remember where that went you know it's like bombing the jo Georgian cities that was Russians having their way so but again I kind of wait for, for me to hear Elon Musk say stuff like this because 
Elon Musk is actually ha helping Ukrainian military by giving them internet access for communication so that Ukrainian military quite often can react to many things a lot faster literally thanks to Elon Musk help you know Elon Musk uh, let's go Elon Musk providing Starlink to Ukraine yeah Elon Musk providing yeah so they had the pop style but Starlink yeah yeah so you see he provides some of the sub Starlink communication to Ukraine, I mean, it seems to be changing now, but at the very beginning of this one, this war, he actually provided Ukraine with Starlink as one of the means of the communication in the war against Russians. You know? But uh, Musk and Jordan Peterson about talking about how Ukraine must give its territories to the Russians because, as like, it's like, it's like, guys, you have no idea what you're talking about. And to be honest, I have seen Dr. Peterson talk about stuff, and I should say that as much as the guy is good in his psychology stuff, which is not something I probably argue with him about, when it comes to understanding of history, when it comes to understanding of like you know situation of awareness in, around the world, to be honest, the guy kind of sh is kind of shit. He's like a muppet. Like I've seen him doing stuff when he was like <laughs> comparing people to Hitler and stuff like this. It's like, you know, some of the stuff that comes with their mouth is like, oh, like look, Putin is like a leader, like Stalin or Hitler. I'm sorry, you know, it's like when people say stuff like this, I always remember, I, I'll always like giving people comparisons. And many of us have obviously read Harry Potter, whether it's for, for, for the, our kids or whether for our own, own entertainment. And there was a character in Harry Potter who lived like a rat in the, well, whatever, Weasley's family. Basically, he, he lived like a rat in a family for like, and then he gets caught and then he runs away to Voldemort. And I mean, you know, I question why he was leaving that family as a rat and I probably question who was the father of the <laughs> of many of the kids but that's a different story but he's like a rat lives like a rat he ran away lived like a rat for, for dozens of years like and then saying that this guy is equal to Voldemort <laughs> which is the main bad guy in the story we all understand it's ridiculous well, Putin is that rat. He's comparing Putin to Stalin or Hitler. <laughs> and those, they, those guys have done horrible things, you know. They 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 look horrible, but great, you know. Like, I'm sorry, like you know, we have to admit that the shit they done is like not something like we can really appreciate as the normal human beings like you know uniting the entire countries about around themselves like it's a fit which not many of us are capable of so and so we can tell, talk about them the same way we talk about they've done great things horrible but great nevertheless it's not something we can say about Putin <laughs> he destroyed his country he's actually made his country live on of the money which they were producing by selling uh, their natural resources they destroyed all the kind of production or any production that still survived in Russia was kind of like a lot of that which now exists there was something they stole like from Ukraine during 2014 or Nick from Georgia or it was some international company just kind of creating new factories in there they destroyed their industries completely. They they can't produce uh, the basic clothes for their military. Like Ukraine can do this. They they don't have the ability to produce like I don't know shells, tanks, whatever. They have to buy that stuff from 
other countries, like North Korea produces more than Russia does. So comparing Putin to someone like Stalin, <laughs> like saying, you see this great, we have to kind of bow down and suck his dick. No, we don't. You want to suck his dick? Fuck off to Russia and suck his dick, Dr. Peterson. But don't make us feel the same way you do. And but on the other hand, I kind of understand why they say, look, you know, if we're not going to do this, there's going to be like famine in many countries. The, obviously, Ukraine was supplying a lot of food supplies to many countries. And this war is something which is stopping us from doing this. Well, again, here's a news flash to Dr. Peterson. Ukrainian farmers have produced almost as much food this year as they did last year. So like despite the fact that Russians have cut off quite a big territory of Ukraine, because Ukrainian farmers did not plant certain things, like you know, they used to grow this rubs or rub seeds or whatever, like some of this stuff probably did not go into the ground this year. It was all about food production. Ukrainian farmers have actually produced almost as much food as they did last year. So all they have to need to do is be able to supply that food to the markets. And the people who stop this from happening are not Ukrainians, they are the Russians. And if you're going to say to Russians, well, you can take whatever you want, guess what they will do? Right, they will continue stopping those food supplies. So that you give them a little bit more. If the Dr. Peterson doesn't understand that, like, you know, doesn't understand that if you deal with a psychopath, and to be honest, like, with a, no, with a psychopath which is, like, highly functioning, like, he's very clever about stealing as much as he can, like, you know, this is what he's been doing, like, about his own, like, making himself feel really good like you know but he's very clever about the way he wants to keep his power because something as i said in my videos and people in ukraine already starting to notice it, saying as well like which is like he's not doing this to capture ukraine he's doing this because he wants to stay in power because the russian people otherwise would end up actually wanting to get rid of him because that what they do for, for history from year to year history in Russia is like look if we have a problem we're gonna have a little war and we're gonna make people unite against us against the rest around us so like we're the leaders and we're leading them because we have to defend the country right and this is how they will always kind of unite people around them it's been happening for hundreds of years so they're not changing their tactics today <laughs> and Actually, I was speaking to somebody who was born, like, you know, from Russia. And they said, like, what if this actually happens? It's like, well, this is what they're aiming for. But obviously, the talk about mobilization, the starting of the mobilization, are very, very unprepared. Like, you know, they're just wanting to throw people to get them as die as many as possible so they can say that, look, you know, this is not the Ukrainians who are fighting us. These are the NATO troops that are fighting us. Like, they're already running this all over TV. I mean, let's, let's take a look at this one. Стало известно, понятно. Стрелков и танкистов, артиллеристов и водителей механиков. Военную службу во время частичной мобилизации кадры. Много где, много где люди по зову сердца. See, they're talking about how people are going into the army, like, you know, but... To, to, for this mobilization, I know I've picked up this video, right? To, to fight. Тут военкоматы понимая, что угроза экзистенциальная, понимая, что страну надо защищать, спасать. Других вариантов у нас не осталось. Что бы я хотел сказать? Вот мы первый раз, наверное, вот в истории видим, что Россия воюет с человека сбережения. То есть мы сейчас Заботимся о своих людях. <laughs> They're talking like they're like off with all the losses they say we're taking care of our people. And this is like about a week ago videos, like twenty third or not, so it, like two weeks ago and <laughs> telling this is like and tens of thousands of Russians dead in Ukraine. And that's like we see it's bullshit, but they're saying this that they're fighting against the wall. Причем без разницы, кто они там, 
мирные жители, те войны, которые воюют на фронте. Основная масса россиян, основное число россиян, наших граждан, реагируют с пониманием, реагируют в под... Но это, так сказать, требует, это, это, это требует выверки каждой запятой. Значит, здесь нет, не, нет и не может быть скоропалительных решений. Поэтому сейчас эти решения принимаются. Но что важно, это где-то, где-то там гремит, где-то там погрохивает там и так далее. Извините за некорректное слово. Это здесь уже. Нет, слава богу, не у нас. Это, но это касается каждого из нас. В смысле не у нас? Покажите фотографию, которую опубликовал. Yeah, you see, this is the one I was talking about. You see, they have these pictures where they have the groups where they shooting from the Russian territory, but Ukrainians shoot back, and they said, "Look, you know, this is already shooting on Russian territory." Губернатор Белгородской области. Конечно, мы об... Там есть это, видео это уже... разрушение это уже... тотального домов, а также есть фотография, где он просто стоит в огромном, простите, очень похоже на кратер. Воронка 12-метровая, это вооруженная. Я имел в виду, что не война пока. Но Украины это... нанесли это... удар по территории Российской Федерации. Да. Понятно, что дождемся резервов, понятно, что пойдем в наступление в самое ближайшее время. Что касается мобилизации, действительно очень много вопросов, на них на все нужно отвечать, чтобы люди не волновались, тем более имея в виду, эту панику, которую прямо сейчас пытаются разгонять западные средства массовой информации, якобы люди пытаются бежать, их миллионы, это, конечно, чушь, вранье, люди идут в военкомат, идут, потому что понимают, что горячая линия, куда можно позвонить, задать все вопросы. Sorry, I, I, this is one of the video. I, I lost, there was a video where the same program, but where they were talking about how they're fighting against the West, so it's like, they're saying that it's the Western weapons, it's the... Western soldiers fighting in Ukraine and we're fighting against the entire world. The Russia and the Russia should the Russians should get together and we should be honest about this that the Russian fighting against. So it's like like this is what happening in Russia. So when Elon Musk and Dr. Peterson say like, oh we have to kind of let Russians have what they have, what they want is like no, no, when you're talking dealing with a lunatic psychopath <laughs> Asking you want to do is give him whatever they want, right? Uh, but uh, quite often, to be honest, we see that uh, this is a, being a video of the one of the guys who like from Russian private military companies is like picking a fight some way in, in Russia. But uh, this is something like uh, da, 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 da. yeah. I'm gonna go to this video. All right, this is... Right. This is a video by guys from Breaking Points, right? These guys... Um, yeah. So these guys always run from the Russian, they always read from the Russian textbooks. Like the stuff they often say is the same stuff which is being said on Russian channels. So it's like quite often if you speak Russian, you speak English and you listen to these two, you go like, this is exact, essentially the same shit. And, but these guys kind of call themselves like, oh, we are alternative media. And what I find often as well, many people like Jordan Peterson and Elon Musk who kind of try to create themselves as personas which are alternative to the modern way of thinking, modern way of doing things, you know, I'm like, they kind of get lost in that media personalities as well, so it's like, this is why they end up talking shit a lot of time and things they don't understand about, because they do take, like, news from these guys, for example, or some other alternative media, and many of these alternative media, to be honest, they sell their, like, you know, they quite often good on their local agendas, because they know what they're talking about, but when it comes to the international kind of coverages, uh, look, uh, for example, this is the comment which I commented to, is like, not me writing this. I love how this guy get endlessly dragged from the Ukraine global cover, Ukraine global coverage, and 
they just keep going back to that and with even more effort because they have global coverage of situations they have no idea about they literally get paid by somebody my comment was like well just see where the money comes from right because these guys they see themselves as revolutionaries as well like you know the alternative to the world and to be honest they they're trying to kind of give us money like they always say like yeah with the alternative media right apparently youtube doesn't give them to have too many ads because they get demonetized whatever and they say look you know we want this as much money as we can to raise our new media to fight the evil media who has normal media who is evil but never bother turning up for the fight against these guys and basically because in their in their thought they are like the revolutionaries of the media market <laughs> right they will take money from anywhere as long as it doesn't kill their local agenda so when it comes to international stuff it's not just these guys I've seen a couple of other channels like this again they claim to be the new media but when it comes to the international they'll say whatever whoever pays best basically and they've been called out on this person that I wrote myself that look I'm Ukrainian let me tell you why this info is full of shit <laughs> and here essentially they talk that Ukrainians have uh, killed some a girl's a daughter of one of the Russian like media again media media faces is like Dugin whatever uh, I rest my case there but again the the people like Peterson and Musk I think quite often they take the info from people like this and then they start kind of repeating that stuff like it's like well look you know like I said, if Mr. Peterson or Mr. Musk tells us, look, go and suck Putin's dick, okay, guys, you know, go and suck Putin's dick. That's my opinion. You want us all to go and suck Putin's dick, lead by fucking example, right? Get on your fancy bikes, planes, whatever, you know, get your well-paid careers, go to Russia and get on your all fours and suck Putin's dick maybe then we might be willing to listen to you on the subject as a ukrainian i say look mr musk thank you for helping ukrainian military to fight back russian invasion ukrainian military have shown that look russian army is well it's not actually even second strongest in ukraine because from the what the feedback i hear from ukrainian commentators is that the people from Donetsk and Luhansk republics they actually fight better than the Russian army it's just the fact that they don't have as much equipment and stuff like this so those guys are actually better army than the Russian army so the Russian army is actually fourth best best army in Ukraine right essentially it's the last <laughs> it's the first it, it is the first army but from the end right but but it can obviously as any Ukrainian that'd be saying like look Mr. Musk thank you very much for helping us with keeping the connection for Ukrainian military you've done a great bang on job but if you really want to get information about Ukraine do use the channels which are coming from Ukraine personally I've made some videos in my videos I generally talk about these channels which is like again privateer station right you can get some good info from there the news the widow you get some good news from this guy he's like make some short videos and you can understand a lot from him this is a ukrainian channel again this is an alternative media but these are the guys who actually kind of do their best they their videos are subtitled they're not video English audio, the English subtitles, but again, very good info. It's a good channel. I recently found Kavert Cabal, which is this guy actually kind of is into, into technology, te like you know, military technology. He's got some interesting programs which are not like properly researched, they're not like just pointing finger at the sky and saying, okay, things are like this. He's actually does some interesting stuff on here, worth watching a look. 
this is a TVP wall. This is a Polish English language channel. So they're saying like, look, this is a Polish perspective on things. And to be honest, this channel gives better world news coverage than, for example, the guys who are just looking at the whatever the fuck their name is. Right. But this guy have do some really good coverage, some good info. So like look, Mr. Peterson, Mr. Musk, whoever fucking else comes with them, right? Use those channels, right? Don't say dumb shit. <laughs> you know, you you can kill your like all, all the all the media personalities you build up, you can kill with a few phrases. We all know that. Right? So again, Funkus 530 these guys at least they, they say look you know we're not sure about this we're thinking like this the ex-military they give some good commentary and like i said there's a lot of good sources of information about ukraine which people can check out i'm trying to make those videos from the point of view from the information i get from ukraine from ukrainians i was born there i lived there like I'm not a YouTuber, so my video is probably shit, <laughs> most likely shit. But again, there's plenty of sources, plenty of people to talk to, and no need to fall in for Russian propaganda. It's especially when it's the propaganda by a petty thief that essentially tries to play a tough guy just so that he doesn't get kicked out of power by people he stole from like he's, he's not stalin he's not hitler he's not even lord fucking voldemort he's just a little rat that happened to be find her place at the top and is like doing the ratty best to stay at the top and make sure that people don't see for what it is uh, miserable rat not even a rat to be honest i wouldn't know which animal to compare putin with because even the rats <laughs> take care about their own <laughs> you know i mean i would say putin is a perfect example of capitalist that simply wants as much money as he can and willing to do whatever is possible for that money that's it that's all he is right He's just a scum of the earth. And so anyways, I think I'm trailing on. I'm a bit, say, taking it over. But I think we covered most of it. I will try to do a video about the tanks and things like this. Because again, quite often many people kind of have very little understanding of the subjects. When they talk about things, I think one more thing we're gonna look at is, yeah, the losses of Russians during this. So for for today, so on on today date on the seventh of tenth, twenty twenty two, Russians have lost, and this is kind of more or less confirmed losses. So nearly two and a half thousand tanks. So many, some of these tanks, not all, but quite a few ended up actually fighting for Ukraine now. Uh, this is uh, troop carriers, so this is like armor, armor vehicles. Uh, 5,000, nearly 5,100, nearly 1,500 uh, cannons, so it's like obviously different calibers. And this is a, no idea what the hell this is, <laughs> sorry. But yeah, something probably to do with control and things like this. But obviously, some vehicles, uh, yeah, 300, nearly 350. This different, different ways of an air defense. So like anything anti-aircraft guns, anti-aircraft control vehicles, or something like this. 177, so nearly 180. 266 airplanes so we're not talking just the battle planes like you know like MiG or like Su-30 or Su-29 or something like or MiG-29 we're talking all of the airplanes so 
including the airplanes that would carry troops. So there's like a few times when they tried to fly into Ukrainian space to throw the like paratroopers in different places and got knocked down. So many planes that were like battle planes as well. Some of the planes were not were not actually knocked down in the air battles, but while they were sitting on the in the airports on the airfields in Crimea for example a few airfields got struck so in the south of Ukraine some airfields got struck and they've lost dozens of airplanes there about 233 helicopters again like no many helicopters got knocked down to be honest when they were sitting on the airfields but we also seen them Ukrainian military using Ukrainian anti-tank missiles to knock down air helicopters in the middle of a flight. So obviously uh, the BPL, BPL uh, the drones basically, are over a thousand drones, um, like winged missiles, so the, the missiles, the long range missiles. So outside the missiles that they have actually managed to fly through and actually hit the targets, which were a lot, unfortunately, against cities, uh, against civilian targets, mostly, but also they lost nearly 250, which have been knocked out of the sky. They have lost ships, so it's like big, I think it was like one or two big ships, but mostly a lot of small ships were lost, like 15. So different cars, so trucks and petrol delivery trucks, you know, like, oh, close to 4,000, so 300 and 800, 3,862, so close to 4,000, some special vehicles, so probably like something that vehicles that would be command centers or the vehicles that will be like you know there to like lay bridges across small small rivers like something like this a multi mine vehicle something like this 135 and uh, soldiers which are killed about 61,680 so these are only killed we also talked about the many soldiers especially officers who quit the russian army and actually i was going to say that probably one of the reasons they have started to the mobilization is because if you have a mobilization the officers cannot quit the army and the old officers who quit so the professional soldiers the ones who survived got back to russia and said i quit their profession can be brought back into the army because essentially they will lose they have such a high losses of over 60,000 people by now obviously having a professional so soldiers who are capable of doing the fighting that is obviously you know very important for the Russian troops obviously when Ukrainians say there's like 61,000 lost we're not talking just about the Russian army because we the Russians also brought in thousands and thousands of private military right and they have heavy losses the private military have had heavy losses if you have seen there was a video of them like going and bringing people out of jails going to jazz and saying look if you survive in Ukraine for six months we you, you essentially finished you can go back free man with good money and also they had people which they have mobilized from the from the Netsk and Luhansk uh, they talk about a few like tens of thousands of men that were essentially picked up on the streets and made to fight and to the best to the best knowledge by Ukrainians commentators those guys are actually fought better than the Russian army but obviously there's tens of thousands of them many of them are dead so we're talking maybe out of the 60,000 maybe only like 40 40,000 are actually Russian army but there's also lots of losses on the on the behalf on on the side of private privately hired fighters essentially mercenaries and people from Hansk and Donetsk which were essentially drafted and made to fight so 
as we can see, is quite big losses on the Russian side. And in the next few months, we're probably going to see that the Russian army is not going to be able to keep up with Ukrainian. We'll probably see the collapse of Russian army, but also after that, we'll probably in the next few months, we'll see a collapse of Russia, right? And that's going to be a shitstorm to look to not look forward to but it will happen so i think i've covered most of it for today like i said i'll try and make a video about the uh, tanks and industries and things industry potentials and things like this because again if you are looking at the war war and actually say to a friend of mine that this ukrainian attack is about three months ahead of schedule which was allowed to happen because the West has finally started to help Ukraine, finally pull, pull their fingers out of their ass. Uh, that help has actually moved out the schedule of this war by about three months towards in Ukrainian favor. Unfortunately, it still lead, led to lots of deaths. So, But for now, I think I've covered everything. I hope this video worked out. <laughs> I've talked for a very long time and if you've been bored and haven't listened to that, I'm not going to blame you, but if you did, uh, do put a like, do put a share, ask any questions, I will try to answer them as much as I possibly can, alright? Okay, thank you very much and goodbye.